the whole concept of composable architectures is to take a much more gradual approach to making sure that the platform stays aligned to the business objectives and that adding and changing small parts while the platform is in production has much less impact than uh, doing these big bang replatforming projects that we almost became accustomed to. Hello and welcome to the 25 Days of Transformation series, where we talk to industry experts and global brands about the highs and lows of digital transformation. We'll learn from real-world business examples, get first-hand industry insights from the digital experts, and we'll take a deep dive into what trends to look out for in the coming months. I'm Tizzy Philp, Strategic Content Lead here at Valtech, and I'm here to guide you through these conversations and to uncover the latest and greatest in digital. If you work in the digital industry, then chances are you will have heard the term Mac by now. To tell us more about what it means, and more importantly, how these composable architectures can shake up your tech stack, I'm joined by Pascal Lajada, VP Commerce for Valtech. With a huge amount of experience in helping clients to transform their commerce offerings, Pascal is also a member of the Mac Alliance, about which we're about to hear much more. So, Pascal, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Lizzie. Happy to be here. So we've obviously been talking about this for a while now internally, but first things first, for those less familiar with the term, let's get to the bottom of what we mean by Mac. Can you explain? Yeah, sure. So uh, MAC is, a, is an acronym that's, that's especially relevant for software vendors in this space, like, like Commerce Tools or Content Stack or Ampliance. And the, uh, and the acronym means the M for microservices, so independent pieces of software that can be developed and deployed. The A for API first, uh, exposing all functionalities through, through APIs and making it available to Kind of any touch point that wants to wants to make use of them. The C for cloud native to ensure you know high availability, high performance, and that you don't really have to worry about hosting these uh, solutions. And the H for headless, which means that these vendors that I just mentioned and others typically don't provide an end user interface. So meaning that either you know clients themselves or, or agencies like like Valtech need to create a user interface, a user experience that, that uses the functionality that's inside of these uh, solutions. And then, you know, it's, it's us as an agency or, or clients like uh, the ones that, that are using these things to build their own composable architectures that, that typically consist of multiple Mach solutions to, to create in, an entire experience. Or it may even include more traditional solutions that are already available in the, uh, in the landscape of our clients. What does this composable architecture approach really mean for brands and, and companies? I mean, how does it differ from the more widely accepted enterprise tech approach? There's two sides to this, I think. From a business side, it means more flexibility, the, the flexibility to adapt to, to changes in the market or changes in the customer demand or changes in the, the products that you want to sell or promote. Also, typically, since these are more like subscription-based solutions, the cost of these running these, uh, these platforms are much more in line with the actual benefits that they uh, provide. And from an IT side, it makes it typically much more easy to respond to demands for the business for changes, to swap in and out parts of the, uh, of the architecture. But in the end, this is all about agility to ensuring that, that businesses are more agile in the way they can respond to changes in the market. Mm-hmm. And you know, agility is not a new term. Microservices, APIs, none of these things are new terms, but really this Mac approach is a new approach. So what does that mean in reality for companies who have to undergo a, a massive change? I mean, that's going to come at a cost, isn't it? Yeah, so it, uh, indeed, it, it, the individual elements are not new. I think the, the combination and the, and the way we look at how to apply it in, uh, in real life is new or at least uh, evolving. 
I think typically we saw that companies overhaul their landscape every, I don't know, five to seven years. And uh, in between these these big replatforming projects would be the smaller, but sometimes still significant and painful uh, upgrade processes. And typically such an overhaul would be a kind of complete replatforming. And the whole concept of composable architectures is to take a much more gradual approach to making sure that the platform stays aligned to the business objectives and that adding and changing small parts while the platform is in production has much less impact than uh, doing these big bang replatforming projects that we almost became accustomed to. You know, this is an IT perspective, but it fits the kind of the transformations that are going on within businesses anyway. A lot of, you know, a lot of our clients are, you know, internally breaking down the silos between product management, marketing, IT, and a shift toward more multidisciplinary teams. And I think making sure that that's reflected in your technology stack makes a lot of sense. And also another trend that we see is that a lot of, for a lot of customers, the products that they sell are becoming more complex, more digital, more connected. Uh, we, a lot of times we see that products get augmented with services, for instance, and you know, selling those products and, and, and servicing these products and making sure that the customer is you know, fully understanding the value that these, these services and products bring don't really fit the traditional approach of having a commerce system that maybe originally was built to sell T-shirts and hats and now it needs to be kind of adjusted to being able to sell these these more complex uh, products and services. Okay, so it's very much an enabler than uh, this approach to to help us to to do the things that we're all trying to achieve as part of the wider business transformation strategy. I think for the listeners, it would be really helpful to contextualize. Uh, what we mean when we're talking about the composable architectures, how it actually works in, in principle. So can you explain the details of how it works or how we've delivered these kind of clients, uh, results for clients? So I think in general, we see that uh, a lot of the digital pure play companies, let's say Amazon and Uber and et cetera, have been taking this approach for, for many years now. So in that sense, also, it's, it's nothing new. We do see now that more traditional companies are adopt this, uh, a more composable architecture and get benefits from it. And let's take an example. So Wavin, based in the Netherlands, but it's a global supplier of piping for, for sewers and drinking water and heating and cooling, etc. So they have a lot of expertise in manufacturing these kind of products out of PVC and, and other materials. And uh, when COVID struck, we all know that there was a shortage of um, personal protection equipment. And uh, Waven figured that they could use their existing production facilities and their the know-how of creating you know, products out of PVC materials, they could use that, uh, the, the, those facilities and that expertise to produce, you know, hundreds of thousands of face shields to be used by healthcare workers. So the, the aspect of producing this, these products was, was not necessarily a challenge, but supplying these to whoever was needing them was a challenge because typically they don't have a direct sales channel. They completely rely on distributors and wholesalers to get their uh, PVC piping products to contractors and, and, and other uh, companies that, that use these products. But time was obviously, obviously of the essence. So we used, in this example, commerce tools to create a direct channel to sell these products or to bring these personal protection uh, devices to frontline workers, to 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 healthcare institutes, et cetera, rather than rely on a distribution channel. And the fact that we did this using an architecture and using technology that was cloud-based, uh, that was headless, allowed us to really quickly spin this environment up, to create a front-end experience that was 
you know, easy to use and, 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 on, and on par of what you would expect from a, you know, a serious company like Maven. And it was directly integrated into their existing uh, back office solutions for fulfillment and uh, those kind of things. So I think taking a more traditional approach to the architecture and hosting, et cetera, it would have taken us much more time to actually create such an environment, to create the experience and to create the integrations into the, uh, the Waven back office systems. We're a founding member of the Mac Alliance, and I'm sure everyone who's been hearing about Mac has probably also been hearing it uh, in the same context as the Mac Alliance. And I know there's been a lot of commentary recently across everyone's LinkedIn feeds and Twitter feeds. Can you give us some more detail about what the Mac Alliance is, why it's, why it's appeared and, and what its uh, ambition is? Yeah, absolutely. So um, also the way we've been talking about it now over the past uh, 10 minutes or so, this whole topic of Mach and uh, composable architectures is still relatively new. And I, th I think still a lot of clients and, and vendors and agencies are still discovering the value that it can bring. And the Mach Alliance brings together vendors and agencies or, or SIs and pioneering clients in this space to come together and basically do two things. Um, first of all, educate the market about what it is, what the benefits are, how, how a composable architecture is a, a viable alternative to look at in comparison to the suite approaches that, uh, that most companies uh, have been taking so far. And on the other end, to also internally share knowledge, share expertise, and yeah, learn from each other. And I think that's also a kind of an interesting side effect almost of these composable architectures that it forces everybody to work together uh, because a composable architecture always consists of, or almost always, I should say, of solutions provided by different vendors. So there is a whole new dynamics going on in defining these architectures, creating them, servicing them, et cetera. And that's, uh, that's very interesting. And so the, the Mac Alliance, on one hand, uh, uh, organizes events and, 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 and webinars and creates blog posts and those kind of things to, to share the knowledge and to educate the market. But also uh, it produces things like blueprints and best practices to, to make it really actionable for anybody that's that's interested in this in this topic or is you know making their first steps in this uh, in this domain and yeah i'm really excited to be that 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 i'm uh, part of it that veltech is part of it and that we work together also you know with with the with the vendors that we already um, have partnerships with but also are basically our competitors that uh, are in the same place as we are and uh, and we're learning from each other that's really exciting Mm, it's like a whole community shift. Absolutely. Do you think that's because everyone is in agreement is in agreement that this is the future? Do you think this is the future? So it is. Uh, it's definitely a future, or uh, or a significant part of the future. I think also, uh, obviously, from the, from the Mac Alliance perspective, it may be a little bit black and white. Uh, when we comp uh, compare these solutions or these architectures to more traditional suites of approaches. But I think in the end, you know, a lot of these concepts are not new they, they, and they will find their way into every enterprise platform. Uh, most of the vendors that we work with are exposing functionalities through APIs and are bringing the, their products to to the cloud and uh, a lot of these composable architectures do incorporate you know true mach solutions together with more traditional uh, platforms that that may have been part of the uh, of the corporate landscape for a long time um in that sense I've, i do feel we are maybe in a little bit the same place as where uh, we were with agile ways of working a decade ago at that time, agile ways of working, whether it's whether it's Scrum or other forms, still needed a lot of explanation, and the market and our clients still needed to 
be educated about it and learn about it and see the benefits of it. And by now, I think Agile has become the de facto approach to software development and the way we do digital projects. And I wouldn't be surprised if composable architectures, I don't know, five years from now, have to have a similar status. That would be exciting. Absolutely. <laughs> Your job will be done, Pascal. Well, I'll um, find something else. <laughs> I think uh, everything that you say is is obviously really interesting, but there will be a lot of people who say, okay, but I'll look on you know, your website or I'll look on, on your direct competitors' websites and you know you have these massive experienced platform partners that you work with already. So it's great to hear that you know, this isn't necessarily an and or an or. It's, it's you know, supercharging in some cases, supercharging those existing platforms. What about for people who are like, okay, this sounds great, but in reality, how do I get started? What would you advise to those people if they think that this sounds like something that would help them and their organization, but they just don't know the first step to take? Yeah, that's a good question. One of the benefits, and I, I talked about this earlier, is the, the fact that you can start pretty quickly. You know, most of it is uh, um, the, the building blocks of a composable architecture are available from the cloud, and that makes it easy to get started. So that would also be my advice, is to, to find a place to get started, to do an experiment somewhere with a maybe a new product that you're trying to launch or with a new market that you're trying to uh, move into or, or take something that's, that's really successful that needs uh, replatforming anyway and start with a small experiment, start with a small proof of concept and you know, learn and appreciate the, the, the benefits uh, that it can have and also get acquainted with some of the drawbacks that there may be and, and take it from there. Um, I think that's a, yeah, it's a smart approach to learning what it means to create a composable architecture, learning what it means to, to use these mock solutions in combination with your existing architecture and, yeah, and do the experiments to try to figure out how and where it can bring value for you. Great advice. Pascal, thank you so, so much for joining us. I'm sure that will have helped an awful lot of people try and get their head around the latest buzzword terminology that we're seeing. Um, so this, is, this has been really helpful. Thank you and good luck. Thanks a lot, Daisy. You've been listening to the 25 Days of Transformation series from Valtech Cafe. If you enjoyed this podcast, then why not subscribe and keep up to date with all of the episodes in this series and a whole host of insights from the Valtech Cafe back catalogue. And if you'd like more information about what we do or to get in touch, why not visit us at valtech.com to find out the details. Until next time, thanks for listening.